Greetings friends, I'm here again at Polyface Farm and we are here today with Shane and we're going to be processing ducks. Yeah. So Shane is going to give me the rundown on how to do it because he uh, feels like he's perfected the technique and doing it and uh, it can be a little more challenging than, than doing broilers. Absolutely, yeah. So if you're familiar with doing broilers, have, if you've done a video or yes. you know how to do broilers already, um, it's very similar. Um, the kill cone is the exact same. The scolder is a little different, same temperature, um, twice as long, so 90 seconds instead of you know 50 or 45 seconds. Um, and the scolder needs to be really soapy. There needs to be a lot of soap in that water because ducks have oil, hydrophobic oil on their feathers, and the soap helps penetrate so the water really gets to the skin and opens those pores up so the feathers will come out. Then I say let them play in the plucker. You just throw them in the plucker. Don't turn the water on. As soon as you turn the water on, their pores shrink back up. So you dry pluck them for three minutes. I mean, let them, they have tough skin. Their skin doesn't tear like a broiler. So really let them bounce around in that plucker for a while. Um, then after the plucker, our wax, we're waiting for it to melt right now. But what we do is we have hot wax. It's about 160 to 180 degrees. Um, then I have ice water here. I go back and forth, basically like a duck candle. I go back and forth about three times. And that puts a thick layer of wax on the duck. Then we throw it up here, peel the wax off. We throw the wax in this pot here so we can reuse it, we re-melt the wax. And then that wax really grabs onto all those little feathers, saves you hours and hours and hours of time at uh, quality control pulling those little feathers out. But yeah, after that, it's, it's the same eviscerating um, quality control and yeah. Fantastic, I look forward to helping out. If it's okay to give me yeah. a hand and hop in yeah, here too. Absolutely, I'd love to have some help. <laughs> Great, so with the soap, is there a special technique for adding the soap and using the soap in here? No, no, it's just, uh, it's this eco-friendly stuff that we use. Um, it's, you know, environmentally responsible. Okay. Um, I put a couple of tablespoons in and I'll do 30 or 40 ducks and then add a couple of more tablespoons. You know, as, as the water level starts to go down, I'll add more water, more soap. Okay. Um, so. Is it an exact science or more you just kind of looking for a certain, going for a certain look as far as how it looks? Yeah, the water a, a couple of tables. I mean, I think this is a, um, a 40, 50 gallon scolder. Okay. So a couple of tablespoons will uh, definitely do it on the soap. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> So I learned what I know about ducks from Greg Gunthorpe. He's up in Indiana, um, in between Chicago, um, in that area. But uh, he, I, I went up and watched him. He, he taught me everything that he knows. I watched him butcher a thousand broilers and 500 ducks in four hours. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was That's impressive. That's crazy. <laughs> That's efficiency too. How yeah. many, uh, a crew of how many to do that? Yeah, you know, 30 people. Okay, but that's still a that's very large facility. Moving. But that is great. Yeah, two scolders that were twice, each of them were twice the size of this one. Wow, yeah. wow. Yeah. And the breed of duck that you have here, are they Pekin ducks? Or? Yeah, okay. these, these are Pekin, okay. domestic Pekin. Okay. They, uh, I get them from Metzer's Farm. Okay. They ship them out here to us. And what age are these? Are yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So they go through a molt cycle. Okay. And you want to butcher them right at 49 days. Okay. So that's whenever they their feathers, you know, are naturally coming out. They're being replaced. Um, so that is that's a really good point to pluck them out. They also so it's seven weeks and I believe 14 weeks. Okay. They go through another molt phase. But the, the size that you get off of a 14 week duck compared to a seven week duck doesn't, um, it's not as profitable for the amount of feed that you have to give them. Makes you sense, know, yeah. you, so that 49 days, is, that's the mark that you want to shoot for. Yeah, yeah okay. that's, that's the first molt cycle that they go through. Okay. She had to turn me up. She's gonna have to I get am. me set up. He can't tie behind himself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What temperature is this one again? Um, Same as this. Is 145. 145. I like to get my arms wet before okay. I start this because it, the blood runs off. Okay. It doesn't. You don't have to pull all your arm hair out. Over here. 
seconds they you know lose consciousness their blood pressure drops so so fast that they you know they're gone in three seconds you'll see them they move around after that but that's just the stored energy in their cells after they die they have to get rid of that stored atp that they have in their in their cells so i put two ducts on either side of the scolder that gives them you want to give it as much space space in the scolder as possible Two ducks on either side, and that'll go for 90 seconds at 145. Yeah. So just like you mentioned earlier, the ducks, since they're a little tougher, are able to withstand being in the plucker a lot longer than your broilers are going to be. So you run a little bit of water at the end. Yeah, just to just to clean them off a little bit. Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, that's for a duck without wax. Man. That's about as good as you can ask for. Man. The hotter the wax, the better it sticks to the feathers. But the thinner the layer is on the duck. So that's why you want to go back and forth. You want the wax to be hot enough to grip onto the feathers. But you have to go back and forth enough times that it forms a thick enough layer that you can peel it off efficiently without spending hours peeling wax off. per person per hour okay so it takes four times as long so instead of having a continuous flow mm -hmm. you have to do it in batches okay you don't want the ducks you don't want rigor mortis to set in with the ducks uh -huh. because the, um, the process is much less efficient Okay. 
it's kind of soft still. You want it to be fairly hard. You can see the the time that this wax saves you. Oh wow! I mean, you would have to pull all of those out individually, or some people just skin the duck. Yeah. Um, and then you lose the bad flavor. Yeah, exactly. That's a valuable right, part. This way? Quick. Out. Quick. Do I just grab one? Or yeah, you kind of want to wait for it to feel it and make sure it's cold. Yeah, I think it's in. You can feel it and it's hard like that. Yeah. Then I take the wax, dump it back in, and we bring it through, this, through the whole cycle. Uh, is there a specific wax you use? Um, this is paraffin wax. Okay. It's what they recommend for ducks. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the difference between different types of waxes, but yeah, this is, this is what they recommend. Okay. <laughs> At what point are you looking down here at the team that's eviscerating uh, mm -hmm. to know when you need to start going again? Um, so I'm looking for, if we have, with this system that I've set up, we have two people pulling wax, two people eviscerating, and then two or three people quality control. Okay. If the wax misses a feather, they pull it out. Okay. They tuck the legs, they make sure everything is, is you know, clean and done. Um, with that system, I'll, I'll do, you know, I'll wait until there's a couple of, only two or three ducks left in this wax. Okay. In these ice tubs right here. And then I'll go back and start. Gotcha. Because it takes about five minutes to get them to here. Okay. And by the time they go through three ducks, I'm, I'm back at the station dipping again. Good. And for today, how many ducks do you have total? 81. 81, okay. Yeah. I really appreciate you doing this and explaining this. Yeah, yeah, happy to do it. That's, I wouldn't be doing it if some other farmer wasn't willing to share the information. I mean, that's what I love about our community is that you know, we're literally this guy didn't know Greg, Greg Gunthorpe didn't know me at all, and he let me stay in his house oh, wow. and like bought bought me dinner, and that's great. he shared every secret he had with me. There we go. And, I mean, that's what farming is about. It's that's about right. that. It's about that community. It is. Community is very, very important. Yeah, it's important we each other and help each other. Means okay, this one's done. We're just trying to get it all nice and clean. Makes it look a lot a bit nicer. Well, I was starting to do that. And then one of them was just a little bit smaller, just so leaned right out of there. <laughs> it made a splash and just a little bit of blood on me, but at least you can tell I've been working today. <laughs> he looks like he's been part of a massacre. <laughs> and we still have to drive home today. <laughs> Maybe we'll just hose him off outside before he gets in the car. Now what do you do with the feet? So the feet, they have a lot of collagen in them. So they make amazing stock. Okay, so yeah. just like chicken feet, yeah. you save the feet for stock. Yeah, exactly. And um, we have the ability to save the head and the gizzard and the heart, and that all goes to a dog food company, and they you know grind it up and make dog treats out of it. Um, so it's you know, essentially a profitable waste product. So it's interesting how I gravitate to the same station that we had back when we processed our chickens. Even when we were doing the processing <laughs> with sow the land. Uh, but it's okay, I, I do. I can't say that I necessarily want to do this, but this is the station that I kind of like to do as far as the, the, the processing of, of uh, chickens and, and now ducks here. Pretty interesting. <laughs> 
so the, in the last couple batches, we've had a little more feathers that are staying on there. So Shane just added some soap. Uh, so hopefully that will help get remove some more of the feathers here. Yeah, listen to what the duck is telling you. That's whenever you look in the flucker and the ducks aren't coming out as well as they should, you know there's something wrong upstream. I'm just starting with 20, 25. I can't remember what I ordered. I figured that was a good manageable number to yeah. start with for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I like to put, you know, Joel put 70 chickens in a shelter. Mm -hmm. Ducks, you want to put about half of that. About half, yeah. okay. Otherwise, uh, they, they trample the grass, you yeah, know, and just make that cake. You know, yeah. ducks, ducks like to mess around in the mud a lot. So they're always trying to make mud. Especially if you get a lot of rain like you have been getting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Shane, how far is your homestead from here? Uh, I live about five minutes. Okay. And a couple of miles as the crow flies. Okay. But uh, it's nice to be so close. You, know, you still feel like you're part of the community. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So what all is, are you raising right now? In addition uh, to the A little bit of everything. <laughs> uh, 50 cows that we rotationally graze. Okay. 100% grass. Uh, we have some draft horses that we work with. Uh, ducks. Obviously, laying hens, I've got 800 layers for polyphase. Wow. Um, get about 30, 35 dozen a day from them. Okay. Um, got, um, you know, the crops that we're doing, the corn, oats, wheat, soybeans. Also, ro rotating those. You know, don't plant the same thing on the same piece of ground year after year. Um, and then I raise broilers for polyphase as well, meat and chickens. Um, and then lambs, that have sheep, uh, about 130 sheep that's true. they raise. And then we have two acres of produce that we manage. Okay. Uh, a full hoop house of tomatoes. Wow. That's we, we stay pretty busy. <laughs> now, how many people are doing all this? Two. <laughs> yeah, me and my fiance. Wow. And we thought we did a lot. We still have to plan next time we come up here to check out what you're doing and the work yeah, you're doing. We'd love to have you. Because he's even growing wheat. Exciting. Yeah. yeah. Like a third of an acre of potatoes. Wow. We're doing it. And a third of an acre of sweet corn. We're about to put in some berries, you know, some fruit, try to go jump into the fruit game a little bit. So the farm that I manage is Ty Lopez's farm. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm the farm manager there. And I also contract with Polyface. So I manage Polyface's livestock at Ty's farm. I manage Ty's livestock, and I also have my own personal livestock. So I kind of have three different jobs. Yeah. Wow. So in other words, he's got a lot going on. But it sounds like he's managing it well. I wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm not gonna do it for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't expect you to. See all for this business. Right? I think I'll go and get some of these. We've been doing it without me. <laughs> Give me freedom.